and the full story with all the details I've given you plus a few others. Now, when I say that there is censorship on this thing, I don't think it originates with the Air Force I, because it covers all of our military services, every one of them. Therefore, this has to be an order from the very top in the Defense Department. Now, how could any organization, how could any agency of the government decide what is going to be carried on the news and what is not going to be. This is called managed news. It's not all managed by the government. You can see there an example of where one of the news wires did a little news managing on their own. They refused to carry the story. So the newspapers didn't have a chance in that particular case. Now, if these things didn't exist, there would be no necessity for the censorship. But the regulations are on the books, JANAP 146B, AFR 200-2, and others. There are the censorship regulations on the book forbidding government personnel, military, and otherwise to make any public statements on this subject. There, there is evidence right there that the things do exist. But the censorship restrictions are there. Now, if the things do exist, as the censorship regulations indicate, and there is censorship, then it must be because somebody has decided that these things present a problem to us and that for some reason or other the American public is not entitled or not fit to know what the problem is. Now we come down to one of the basic principles of Americanism and this is the thing that I am fighting and fighting hard against and it's simply this. There is nothing in the Constitution and there is nothing in any amendment to the Constitution that gives any agency of the United States government the right to withhold public information from the American people. And yet some agency in the military has taken it upon itself to issue the censorship, uh, to issue the censorship regulations which say quite plainly that they, regardless of what they find, they must tell the American public something else. This is fraud and lying, and it is illegal, and it's unconstitutional. Now, the issue before us is this. How much longer will the American people sit back and take this? They are paying the salaries of everybody in that Defense Department where this order originated. The question I ask you is this, and it's a question for you to ask yourself and to ask your congressman. You're paying the salary of those men over there. Are they working for you? Or are you taking orders from them? At the present time, ladies and gentlemen, you're taking orders from them. There isn't a man in Congress, to my knowledge, who dares to get up today and challenge the Defense Department because this phony space program, this $50 billion worth of fireworks that we've bought, is spread around in every congressional district in the United States so that every congressman has hundreds and maybe thousands of constituents who are on some space payroll. The minute he gets up and challenges the Defense Department, he's going to hear from the folks at home. He's going to hear from the factory owners and he's going to hear from the chambers of commerce and the other people who are interested in seeing that he doesn't do anything to upset those space contracts. We've got to find out how deep that dust is on the moon. Now, this has given the Defense Department a stranglehold on this nation. President Eisenhower realized this in the closing days of his administration, and he said in his farewell message that he didn't know how, how long this could continue, this state of affairs where the military was spending more than half of the national budget. And he didn't know uh, whether the American people could live with this or not. Now you notice that President Johnson is cutting down military uh, deals here and there and everywhere and space deals and he's meeting tremendous opposition in Congress and in the Defense Department. He's meeting it in Congress because the Defense Department is buttonholing Congress and, and burning the congressmen and needling them through the boys back home who stand to profit by this thing. What you have done today and what Johnson is trying to do and what Eisenhower warned us about is that we've got to recover control of this country from the military and we better do it pretty soon. This UFO censorship is only one facet of it, but it is a glaring example 
of how the military will shove its foot down your neck if it gets a chance. Now, if these things do present a danger, if they are a menace in any way, if they are as important as we have every reason to believe that they are on the basis of the official attention that they're receiving all over the world, then the American public has a right to know what is known about it. The Defense Department is nothing more than a bodyguard for the United States of America. And if you have hired a bodyguard who knows that you're in danger and won't tell you about it and won't permit anybody else to tell you about it, then it's time you got yourself a new bodyguard. <laughs>